Hey everybody, welcome to our channel. I am Ruben Valdez and we are Fervent Faith Missions. Now our mission is to teach you faith and how to keep it fervently without wavering. As a reminder, I just wanna ask you, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you're getting notifications. Please hit the thumbs up button and share this video to help us get the news out. And if you're on social media, Facebook, Instagram, please share this to your story. We'd appreciate it so much. Thank you. So the title of my message today is Sickness Was Taken Care Of in the Atonement. Sickness in the Atonement. And before I get started, I just want to get a little prayer out there for y'all. So Heavenly Father, we come before you. Your word is true. We thank you for your word. It is the only unfallible, unfallible word on the planet. Lord, we thank you. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over these airways. I ask your angels to go before me, Lord Father God, and to spread out through these electronic waves and through this, this screen and by the sound of my voice, Lord. I just plead the blood of Jesus over every single person listening. Lord, I ask that you open their eyes and their ears and that everything that I'm about to say gets to the heart, Lord Father God. Let this information become revelation so they can be stationed in your word as warriors in your army. So Lord, I thank you for this time in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <laughs> so a lot of my notes that I have here, I actually got from the DHT handbook. And this is stuff I learned from John G. Lake Ministries. Now, you're going to hear me reference John G. Lake a lot. I just... It's, it's amazing. I'm speechless when I talk about it. But the DHT is called Divine Healing Technician. And it's a workbook I got. Um, it was written by a guy named Curry Blake, Pastor Curry Blake. He's pretty amazing. So first off, I just want to make a suggestion to every one of you watching right now. If you're sick, I want you to read, study, meditate on your Bible, for it's alive. Now, I also want you to study and research the generals of faith. You have to do this. Generals of faith. And I'm talking about people like, of course, John G. Lake, Dr. John Lake, Catherine Kuhlman, A.A. A. Allen, Oral Roberts, uh, John Alexander Dowie, Amy Simple McPherson, and of course, Smith Wigglesworth. <laughs> of course, we're not going to follow their tactics of healing, but we're going to follow a lot of the things that they did. Anyways, just learn what they did, and just as you would learn from Jesus Christ of Nazareth or what the Apostle Paul did, you're going to do the same as these guys did because they did that as well. John 14, 12, greater works will we do than Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he goes to the Father. So, I just want to ask you another question. Simple question. How can we believe we are saved but not healed? Well, we can see the flesh, but not the spirit. And unfortunately, most people believe what they see, not what they know. And as a matter of fact, salvation is greater than healing. To be saved is greater. You must know this, right? So if you believe you're saved, then you should believe his word that says you're healed. It's really that simple. It cannot be for God's glory of his children should be unhealed, since God is never glorified in our sickness any more than our sin. For both sickness and sin are clearly Satan's work. I mean, it's, it's saddening that people will say that God uses sickness. I mean, a lot of people do that today, and you'll hear it like, oh, I'm sick because God wants to teach me a lesson, or I'm going through this issue because God is teaching me something. If you really think about it, God brought life abundantly, life abundantly. To say that God is using sickness or disease to teach you something, that's like to say the sickness is the Holy Spirit or that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of infirmity. That's heresy. I mean, that is dangerously close to attributing the works of the devil to be the works of God. We can't do that. God has... God, as the great judge of heaven and earth, has decreed freedom for all that are oppressed. Jesus went about doing good and healing, setting free. 
all that the devil held in bondage. And it was also through the oppression of sin and sickness. He caught everyone out of that. So I'm going to go over five things right now that Christians use when referring to salvation. And this is just normal stuff. Number one, we have no problem telling an unsaved person that Jesus died for them, right? It's pretty simple. Number two, we have no problem telling them that Jesus paid the price and penalty for their sins, right? Number three, we say Jesus provided their salvation over 2,000 years ago. Number four, we say Jesus is no, in no way will reject them if they accept his sacrifice. And number five, we tell them that there is no question that to whether or not they can be saved. Yet, the exact same word, well, the exact same wording is used for the healing of their physical bodies, for sickness and disease, as it is used for the healing of their spiritual sickness, aka sin. Make sense? <laughs> Jesus preached man's health and healing, just as he preached our salvation from sin. The very word salvation, as a matter of fact, um, in the Hebrew and Greek, means the same thing. It means healing. Salvation means health. Look it up. Absolute deliverance from all harm and sickness. There's a reason for this. See, healing is also connected to, this, to the atonement in Scripture concerning the Lord's Supper or communion. So now we're going to get into, well, the communion. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 31. So for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Note, Jesus broke the bread first. Just as he was scourged, beaten, bruised before he hung on the cross and died. Next, in the same manner, he also took the cup after saying, <clears throat> after supper saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. So note again that the two are once again found and bound together. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, eat, drink. Therefore, whoever eats or drinks this cup of the Lord is in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself. Crazy, right? Not discerning the Lord's body. Get that last one? Not discerning the Lord's body. Notice, it doesn't say the Lord's blood. It says the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you. And many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Now, again, note, note, that many among you in the church are weak, sickly, and even are asleep in the Lord because they did not discern the Lord's body. So, if one can become sick by partaking communion wrongly, then naturally one can become, can obtain healing by partaking it correctly. Um, let's move to uh, Matthew 8, 16 through 17. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, not some, all, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. So here's another note for you. Notice that to fulfill Isaiah 53, everyone had to be healed, which was a reference to the future basically total fulfillment of Jesus' scourging, beating, and death. Um, let's do Isaiah 53, 4 through 4. So surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. So it says it right there. He borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. 
and with his stripes we are healed. That's past tense, by the way. So Isaiah 53, 11 through 12, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. There it is again. He shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and again, and he bore the sin of many. I'm going to say it again. And he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressor. So now let's jump to 1 Peter 2.24. I hope you're taking notes, because this stuff is super duper important. I mean, if it, you can memorize, but taking notes helps you memorize. So 1 Peter 2.24 who him own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, again, by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes ye were healed. Again, that's past tense. It's done. It is finished. So the verse here, quoted by Peter, was originally proposed by the prophet Isaiah <clears throat> concerning the Messiah. The words used for healed each time um, was a word that was only used for physical healing. This was by no mere chance that these words exactly portrayed the intent. So in Hebrew, it was Rafa. Have you heard that? Rafa. Do you ever read the Strong's Concordance? Because if you do, it's Strong's uh, 7495. And that's as in Jehovah Rafa. Um, it's a primitive root uh, properly. And it's meant by stitching uh, to make cure, to cause, to heal, repair, make whole. Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. Jehovah Rapha. I say that all the time. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. So all these verses are referring to the same thing. Um, some have tried to say that since Jesus fulfilled the prof prophecy, he is no longer healing the sick. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing how many people out there today don't believe that Jesus still heals. They think it's already done. Or how there's many Christians out there that do believe in miracles and healings, but don't walk on it or walk it out. They just simply believe the story in the book. They just don't agree with it. If that makes sense. <laughs> so to follow some... Let me read my notes here. To follow the same reasoning would force us to say that since Jesus saved those who were following him at the time, he went to the cross. He's no longer saving anyone. <laughs> what? Anyways, Matthew, what he did is he used divine inspiration, God, divine, God's divine commentary that would attribute to the verses in Isaiah 53, to the physical healing of the people mentioned in Matthew 8, 16-17. So basically, this ties physical healing to the atonement scriptures. And the verse is again brought forth in 1 Peter 2, 24. Um, what this does in 1 Peter 2, 24 just also proves that the verse applies to physical healing and not spiritual healing from sin alone. And that's another thing. A lot of times people use that as a spiritual thing, like on the, on the cross, not actual physical healing. But here's a fun fact. I had to throw this in here. This is pretty cool. Fun fact, every healing from Abraham to Malchus, remember Malchus, was by faith in what Jesus was going to do. Every healing since is by the fact of what Jesus did. Did you get that? <laughs> every healing from Abraham to Malchus, Malchus was by faith in what Jesus was going to do. Every healing since is by the fact of what Jesus did. That's pretty cool. You'll get it. Something to think about there. Anyways, that's all I have for today. And uh, before I go, I just would like to pray for all of you that are suffering and sick and just have some sort of ailment that you're dealing with. Um, basically, I just want to say, Father, we thank you. Your word is absolutely true. I'm speaking to the people from all over the world watching this video. And Father, I thank you right now, right now, wherever they are, by an act of my faith and by an act of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died for my sins on the cross. I just want to say to anyone out there, be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Infirmity, 
sickness, death, premature death, ailments, mental ailments, go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave right now. You will leave their bodies wherever they are at right now. You are not allowed to be there. It will be this way and no other. You cannot stay there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I talk to their bodies. I speak to your flesh and your, your soul. Be healed now in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Well, thank you for listening to me. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video again. And if you feel led by the Lord to support our ministry, we will leave a PayPal link in the description below. Until next time, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. In Jesus' name, amen.